Well, what is this? This is the new ZWO ASI 294 monochrome. This just turned up in the mail. No, I didn't actually just turn up in the mail. I've actually had this for about three weeks now. Had some time on to go out and image with it. So let's jump into a review. But before you do that, if you'd like this and more reviews, make sure to hit subscribe. I haven't asked for that before, but everyone's doing it. So let's jump on that bandwagon. Anyway, let's jump into that review. For those of you who have watched my review on the 294MC Pro, this will look very familiar to you. And that's because it's almost identical from the outside. Other than having two M's on the back, you could not tell these cameras apart from the exterior. On the interior though, there is a lot that is different and we're gonna go over all that. So let's jump into some of the quick features of this camera. Then we'll go into some of the controversial future possibilities of this camera. Then, and this is the big one, let's compare it to the 1600 monochrome, the workhorse camera of many astrophotographers around the world. How does this compare? Is it worth the upgrade? What have we waited all those years for? Is this the new monochrome Micro Four Thirds King? So the 294 monochrome got released about a month ago and I've had this for around three weeks and I've had a little bit of time to get some first light on it and my initial impressions. From a build perspective, it is, as I said before, almost identical to the 294 color version and very similar to all the WO cameras. It has this red anodized outside, cooling fins with a cooling fan. Uh, this requires some extra power. It's then got a little USB 2 hub, so this is great for your guide camera or a filter wheel. Connect, and then it's got your standard USB 3 connector on the back here to connect it to your computer. On the front we have some spaces and just the raw sensor with a bit of glass over the top. Now this camera, like all of the WO's cooled cameras, can cool to about 35 or 40 degrees below ambient. But slightly different to the color version, this does have a built-in dew heater on the front here. So if we take off the front spaces here and cap, this bit of glass right on the front here over the sensor here does actually have a dew heater built into it. So that will help prevent dew from forming inside the top of the camera here. So quickly going all over all of the features then of this camera. So you can think of this as pretty much a copy of the 294 color camera but in monochrome. So it's a micro four thirds sensor, which is great. It's a good size. It means you don't need really large filters if you want to go down the narrow band or LRGB route. It means you can just get smaller filters, which will save you money. Uh, it has a really good pixel size of 4.63. So this is good if you're shooting around the 500 to 1000 millimeter focal length, or even maybe a little bit deeper. This will get you really good detail. It also has a really good full well depth, around 66,000, which is very nice. This camera also has quite low dark current, is quite a bit lower than that of the 294 color variation. And I do have to say it is even less than the 1600 monochrome. Next up, we come to the quantum efficiency. Now the quantum efficiency of this camera is extraordinarily high. Um, it is at 90% QE and that is just, that is really cool. So that is one thing that I think really sets this camera apart and will make your night's imaging a lot better. I've got the USB hub on the back here. We have the power adapter for the cooling fan. This power adapter also works the dew heater inside here. Now, ZWO says that you can turn the dew heater on and off. I haven't found a way to do that in their software, but it is possible that since this camera is so new, the software hasn't been updated to account for this new driver. So that is something that I do want to put out there and say at the moment I haven't been able to find a way to turn off the dew heater. Not that I necessarily would want to, but if you did want to, have a wait and check back in a bit and I will put an update down below if I hear that that option has been added. Now the dew heater takes up about 5 watts when it's running at full bowl, so not a huge amount of power, but you do want to take that into consideration when you are calculating the batteries or power supply that you are going to be using for your astrophotography run for the night. Okay, so this camera does have amp glow. So it is not like some of ZWO's other cameras that are amp glow free. This does still have amp glow. Now amp glow is not the end of the world. The majority of cameras have amp glow and this one does have some. Now as you can see here in these amp glow images, there is a 
typical star up the top left, a little bit of glow down the bottom left, and another small bit of glow on the middle right hand side there. Now you wouldn't need to take dark frames or because this is a cooled camera, you can take a dark library. That means when it's a cloudy day, plug your camera in, leave the lens cap on or put it in a dark sp spot. Make sure no light is gonna leak inside. Set it to the temperature that you will be imaging at. I usually image at about negative 10 degrees Celsius and just let it start powering away. Take photos at the gain and exposure levels that you'll be taking your light photos at. So if you're using narrowband filters, you might wanna take some really long exposures, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes long. If you are doing just your LRGB wide band imaging, then you might wanna take anything from 15 to three minute exposures, depending on how much light pollution you have in your area and create a bank of these. Create 20 to 50 of each of these images. That'll give you a really great dark library that you can then use as a master dark and then your amp glow will completely subtract out. So overall, this is a really nicely built camera. There is definitely no torsion or anything in, in it. It is gonna stay together quite well. And now into some of the controversial parts of this camera. So the ASI 294 monochrome does not use a 294 sensor from Sony like the 294 color camera does. Sony does not produce a monochrome version of the 294 sensor. So instead, ZWO and QHY have gone and used Sony's IMX492 sensor. Now this is a great sensor, but it has some differences to the 294 sensor. It is still a micro four thirds sensor, so it is the right size. However, it is a much higher resolution sensor. And this means the size of the pixels on that sensor are very, very small. They are just over two nanometers large. Whereas on the 294 color camera, they're about 4.6. QHY and ZWO have done some really cool stuff here and they have binned those pixels. And what they mean is that, and what that means is that they have added those pixels together. And that means that if you get an array of four pixels, so two pixels by two pixels in a square, you can sort of combine the, the details out of those and create pixels that are 4.63 nanometers big. That's exactly the same size as the 294 color pixel sizes. Fantastic. What it also means is, is you get extra bit depth. Now, normally the 492 sensor is 12 bit depth. However, when you combine those four pixels together, you get an extra two bit depth in your sensor. This is great. This means you get extra details. This means you can tease out extra details in the shadows of your images. And what is astrophotography made of? Mostly shadows. So this means that we get extra detail in those really dark shadowy sections and you can differentiate between different levels of black a lot better. That's fantastic. Technically, that should mean we get an extra two dynamic stops of range in the 14-bit binned mode compared to the unbinned 12-bit mode. Now QHY has gone an extra step and allowed the unbinned 40 megapixel version of this uh, sensor to be read directly in their drivers. That means you can toggle between the 40 megapixel, 2.3 nanometer pixels and the 4.6 nanometer pixels and 11 megapixel version. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, this means if you're going ultra wide, you might want to drop the pixel sizes down so you can sample better and get a bit more resolution. But the trade-off, of course, is that your pixels are much smaller now. They're gathering a lot less light and you lose that bit depth. So you're actually going to be a lot less sensitive to light in that mode. Now, ZWO at the moment has not enabled that mode. It may be possible for them to through a driver update. However, at the moment they have said that they are not sure if they're gonna release this mode. So your mileage may vary. This camera may get better in the future and enable us a 40 megapixel version, or it may not. Only time will tell. So now what you're all here for, how does this camera compare to the 1600 monochrome, the king of micro four third sensors? Well, I have some good news. This camera kills the 1600 in nearly every regard. And don't get me wrong, that's expected. The 1600 has been around for a long time, but thankfully there is something now that's come along that can actually do that. So how is it better? 
Well, first off, you have larger pixels. You get 4.63 nanometer pixels compared to 3.8 nanometer pixels. The larger the pixel, the more light they can gather in your exposure, which means you get a better signal to noise ratio in your image for the same exposure time. So first box, tick. Second box, resolution. Now, the resolution of the 294 monochrome is actually less than that of the 1600 monochrome. So you will actually lose a little bit of resolution. But that is all due to that larger pixel size still trying to fit into the Micro Four Thirds sensor. The sensor in this is actually slightly larger than the 1600M, but due to constraints within the Micro Four Thirds sensor size, you do lose some resolution. Now this camera will actually be better in moderate scene conditions because of those larger pixel sizes, but may lose out under exceptional scene conditions. However, luckily that's not all that this camera has over the 1600. So the sensor is about 10% wider than the 1600mm, but about 3% shorter on the vertical. Now, overall that means the sensor is about 6% larger. So you will get a larger field of view through this sensor than you would through the 1600. So expect a little bit extra on the sides of your images when framing up compared to the 1600. So the 294 is also a 14-bit sensor. Well, technically, it's a 12-bit sensor but it's binned in a two x two mode, which gives the camera 14 bits of depth when reading out. Now that's an extra two bits of depth compared to the 1600mm, which on paper might not sound like much, but it can equate up to an extra two stops of dynamic range of details in those shadows, which does absolutely help and helps push this camera well up into the 13 stops of dynamic range compared to the 1600, which is at about 12 stops of dynamic range. What does that mean? Well, that means you can capture extra detail from dark to light compared to the 1600mm. Next up is the full well depth. And this camera has a very large full well depth of 66,000. The 1600mm has a full, depth, full well depth of 20,000. That means this camera can capture a lot more electrons before those individual pixels get full and that means that you're far less likely to have your stars overexpose compared to the 1600mm. So, like for like, this camera can expose for longer than the 1600mm before oversaturating. And the list isn't done. The quantum efficiency of this camera compared to the 1600 is an absolute generational leap. And it should be. The 1600mm is using a sensor that is many, many years older than the sensor in this. But, all the same, the 1600mm has a quantum efficiency of an average of around 60% over its entire curve. And you can see up here how that curve looks compared to the 294, which has a quantum efficiency reaching 90% in some areas. So what does that mean? Well, quantum efficiency is how efficient the camera is at turning the photons of light that come in and hit the sensor into a digital signal. This can convert 90% of that into light, which means you can image 50% faster on this camera than you can on a 1600mm. That alone is a monstrous achievement of this camera. And that means the light that your camera is capturing ends up in your final image rather than as heat or noise or being lost in the digital conversion of that image. Finally, the dark current of this. Now, the dark current of the 1600 is already really low and very good, but this camera does slightly have it beat. So there is no risk here of having extra dark current noise coming into your images because the 294 monochrome is actually slightly better than the 1600. And to top it all off, as we mentioned in the feature section, this new camera does have a TEC heater on it. So if you live in a very humid environment, this may solve your issues there. So everything we've talked about so far is great. And that's definitely part of the reason why I'm excited about this camera. But for me, the best thing is how well this monochrome camera pairs with the 294 color variant. They're the same sensor size, they have exactly the same pixel size, and they even have a very similar well depth. So these two cameras are ideally placed to allow you to do LRGB. Now, you can do LRGB with just a monochrome camera using luminance, red, green, and blue filters that you put over the front. But my preferred way is actually to do take your luminance with a monochrome camera and take your RGB with a one-shot color camera. 
This greatly simplifies things. You don't have to do individual red, green, and blue flat panels. You don't have to have a full filter wheel with your red, green, and blue filters. Instead, you can use your monochrome with just a luminance, or in my case, I used a light pollution filter. And you can use that same light pollution filter on your One Shot Color 294MC and create really wonderful LRGB images. So here on the screen, I'm gonna show you what the red, green, and blue One Shot Color 294MC Pro can get you. This is the Lagoon and Triffid Nebula, and it looks quite nice. I should say this is taken under my inner city skies, so it looks really good for a Bortle 8 sky. But now if we take the luminance images taken from the 294 monochrome, which you can see here in their raw monochrome format, if we create this as our luminance layer and in Photoshop stack on the RGB color image we just took for our color details, you can see that we can get extraordinary details out of the monochrome luminance and very easily drop that color back in on top to create a splendid looking LRGB image. If you like this review, make sure to hit subscribe, drop your comments if you have questions or comments below and I will answer them. What do you think of the 294 monochrome? Do you think it's a good camera? Do you think you should get the QHY instead? I really hope that ZWO unlocks the binning here because otherwise I think this is really a flawless camera. It's just a shame that they haven't unlocked the binning yet. So ZWO, come on, unlock the binning for this camera and make it the camera that I truly want.